Good morning and welcome to St. John's McGonagall's Morning Praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The glory of Christ is revealed. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. During this epiphany season, Jesus is unveiled to us. He manifests himself as true man and true God, because that is who he is. He is true God in order to save us. He is true man to live in our place. A part of this is seeing him perform miracles, proof of his divinity, but we also see his compassion. We see that he knows exactly what we go through, his compassion for us. Finally, he came here to die for us. He's not really the miracle worker as much as he is the man dying on the cross. That's his most important thing. Let's hear about Jesus walking on water, Matthew chapter 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Here again we see that Jesus is about his words. He walks on water to them because he's true God, and he can do that. Immediately they misinterpret things and think it is a ghost, and they are fearful. But Jesus, with his words, not with his miracle, but with his words, says, Don't worry, calm down, it is I He calms them with words, just like before he calmed the winds and the waves with words. Now, Peter, of course, wants proof, much like Thomas wanted proof on Easter. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to the disciples? uh, Later, they they told Thomas, who wasn't there that, that first Sunday evening of the Easter season, and he said, we have seen the Lord. And he said, I won't believe it unless I see his nail marks and where they put that spear into his side. And so a week later, Jesus saw Thomas in the same place and said, you want proof? Here you go. Put your finger here. Put your hand here. Stop doubting and believe. Peter says, if it's you walking on water, then then tell me to come to you. And Jesus says, okay, come. And Peter walks on water. Peter walks on water because Jesus gave him permission to do so. But it was also a lesson. Peter, notice, he falls, and when he falls, it's when he is not looking at Jesus, but he starts to look down, and he sees the wind and the waves, and he becomes fearful, and he no longer goes by Jesus' words. He goes by his sight, and the faith vanishes, and he starts to sink. And Jesus says, you of little faith. But notice that Jesus does not abandon Peter, does not throw Peter away, He's working on Peter. He's showing Peter that, well, Peter's faith isn't that great. Your faith is not in your faith itself. It's in Christ. Your faith is only as good as what you believe in. 
So don't go trying to walk on water if Jesus didn't give you permission. I don't care if you believe or not. That's not the point. The point is, what do you believe in? When his eyes were on Jesus, when he trusted Jesus, well, he walked on water because Jesus let him. But once he started to trust his eyes, trust his instinct, trust himself, or even trust his faith, well, then he started to sink. So your eyes need to be on Jesus. Your eyes need to be on Jesus, not for walking on water, but for getting through this life and getting to the next life. When you start doubting, it's probably because you're looking to yourself and you're worrying about, is my faith strong enough? Is, is this world going to damage me and my family? And your eyes are on the wrong thing, on the faith itself or on the world around you. Your faith is in Christ. Your eyes are supposed to be on Christ. And when they're on Christ, well, Jesus gives you permission not to walk on water, but to walk into this world, even to walk through the darkness, even the darkness of death. So forget about water for a second. Think about walking through these suffering times and through death. Are you going to sink? Well, you will if you put your faith into only medicine, and only the world, and only yourself. You'll fall apart. But if your eyes are on Jesus, well, he gives you permission to walk, not through water, but through this suffering and through death, to life everlasting. So eyes on Jesus, faith in Jesus, and nothing else. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty, unbounded, your glorious, true and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we also pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>